So thank you very much for the uh, invitation. Um, uh, delighted to be with you, even though it's only online. Uh, although I see at least one person in the audience, uh, I think in three days in Zurich, if I understand this correctly. Um, so this is a very different paper from Chef Nem, whose presentation I very much enjoyed. It's a more focused paper, more narrowed actually, um, because we focus here specifically on the banking sector. Um, and specifically, we focus on the effect of uh, COVID-19 on the shock and everything that came with it um, on the banking sector in, uh, in the US. Um, uh, the original title actually was, uh, Are Banks Catching Corona? Uh, obviously, then um, we've been working on this paper for almost a year now. We have changed the title, Have Banks Caught Corona? I'm not sure whether the next uh, iteration will have yet another title. Let me just mention this is joint work with Jan Keil from uh, Humboldt University uh, in Berlin. So. Um, as I mentioned, we look at the effect of the pandemic and lockdown on bank health and also um, bank lending. Um, now, if you think about it, if you kind of want to frame this a bit on a theoretical level or conceptual level at least, um, typically what we think about what happens during a recession or a crisis is that um, uh, there will be a lending retrenchment. Right, for all kinds of reasons, uh, dropping collateral values, increasing agency problems, uh, bank losses, uh, funding problems for banks. Um, however, this hasn't really always happened like this, including during the global financial crisis. There was uh, initially an increase in uh, CNI loans on banks' balance sheets, uh, mainly due to the drawdown of credit lines. And uh, as been shown during this COVID shock, uh, that actually has also been the case in the initial uh, phase of the, uh, of the crisis. Um, it's a bit clearer when it comes to loan conditionality. I think there, there's a clear indication that during a crisis, during a recession, the uh, loan conditionality typically uh, tightens. Um, now, there are lot, lot, tons of papers already, I would argue, uh, on, the, uh, um, uh, on the COVID crisis and, the, uh, and the, the reaction or the impact on the banking sector. I mean, there has been a bit of a productivity shock for a positive productivity shock for us, uh, especially last year for us economists. Um, now, you wonder what is different in this paper. I guess what we are looking at or what makes this somewhat different is that we look at the how the exposure to the pandemic on the bank level and the exposure to the lockdowns has affected banks' financial health and banks' behavior. And there we look at the U.S., um, not just because everybody looks at the U.S., but also because there we have this variation as I'm going to show you here right in the in the next graph, we have this variation in terms of how the pandemic has spread over time across different parts of the US. So this starts here from the first down to the fourth quarter of, uh, of 2020, all data for 2020. Um, plus, also there have been, of course, marked geographic differences in the use of lockdown policies, which of course have an additional economic, constitute an additional economic shock uh, for the uh, areas uh, concerned. And this, and I'm gonna show you in a moment that this is also, um, there's a, it's just not um, uh, what the eyes tell you, but also in the regression, there has been also a correlation um, of pandem both pandemic and lockdown independently with unemployment rates uh, across countries, across states uh, uh, in the US. So how do we use this information in terms of the pandemic and in terms of the lockdown? Um, so we uh, look at, um, we take uh, um, uh, the, the branch network of banks plus the deposit distribution across banks, across branches of each bank to kind of uh, construct a time varying exposure measure of banks to both the, uh, the COVID measured by COVID-19 deaths uh, per capita um, on the county level and to lockdown measures uh, on the state level, because there hasn't been much variation within states in terms of lockdown, at least not in most states, um, to kind of uh, construct this um, exposure matter on the bank level in terms of how much they have been exposed to the pandemic and to the NPIs. And to give you two uh, examples here, um, the red one is the um, uh, is uh, Citibank, uh, which has been exposed much more to the COVID-19 crisis given where the locations of their branches are and also their depositor base, um, as opposed for, to uh, Zion's Bancor, which is uh, headquarters in Utah and has uh, mostly branches and therefore also depositors in uh, areas which have been less exposed to COVID-19 than the uh, lockdown measures. Now you wonder, 
um, depositor um, uh, distribution, does it actually match with uh, borrower distribution? It does actually. So we do have a couple of alternative tests that we use uh, um, a borrower um, um, distribution according to HDMDMA and according to PPP, uh, um, not PPP, sorry, the um, small business loans. Um, and we get very similar results in terms of uh, the uh, geographic distribution um, of banks and therefore there then also exposure to the pandemic and the uh, lockdown measures. So, um, but first of all, let me take again a step back and just show you again the areas which were more affected by the pandemic over time and also more to the lockdown measures. So these are the, the red ones um, above median of COVID deaths um, red here again in the, in the bottom thing, the top the, the top quartile in terms of uh, of lockdown measures, they also experience a much higher increase in unemployment. Um, lockdown measure basically is this uh, measure. Um, uh, the name just doesn't come to my mind. Olivier, Olivier something. Sorry, um, um, a very smart French economist um, who constructed this uh, very interesting lockdown measure both across countries, but then also across states on the. Uh, uh, within the US, uh, ranging from uh, zero, no lockdown to six, uh, nobody can leave the house. Um, right. So, um, if, so this is kind of more as a kind of motivation or kind of construction of the data. And so the first step, what we then do with these data is we look at um, the effect on loan loss provision and non performing loans. Um, uh, regressed on these, um, uh, both on the time trend, but also on the bank's exposure to uh, uh, pandemic and to the lockdown. The first thing you can see, this is just average data. Yes, there was an increase in both loan loss provisions and uh, NPLs, more so in provisions than in NPLs. Um, although also then uh, later on it was uh, uh, it was reversed, um, both in terms of non-performing loans, but also even more so in, uh, or not more so, but also in terms of the, the loan loss provisions. Now, if you exploit the variation, the one thing you say is what we do in all of these regressions, um, we have, uh, uh, again, um, uh, uh, data on the um, bank quarter level. We have data from 2019 and 2020. Our um, uh, benchmark quarter is uh, the fourth quarter of uh, uh, 2020, sorry, 2019. So we have data for 2019 and 2020. Um, benchmark is the fourth quarter of 2019. And um, um, so if you look at these four quarterly dummies for 2020, uh, you kind of pick up the, the national trend, nationwide trend in terms of loan loss provision in terms of uh, non-performing loans, which you see increase more so loan loss provisions than non-performing loans. But in addition, we also find this uh, um, direct link between the exposure of banks to the pandemic, again, geographically over time, and to lockdown measures, um, both in the case of, um, um, of uh, loan loss provisions, only in terms of uh, lockdown measures in the case of non-performing loans. So in general, the, um, the, uh, we can, it's, much, it's much harder to explain variation uh, in non-performing non loans across banks with exposure um, based both national trends and exposure to uh, 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 pandemic than it is in the case of uh, loan loss provisions. So this is kind of the first result, financial health. So yes, there was a deterioration in uh, financial health for banks more exposed geographically to the pandemic, to lockdown measures, um, more robust for loan loss provisions, not surprising than for non-performing loans. As we know, of course, there was a relaxation of the rules uh, for uh, classifying loans uh, while banks at the same time were encouraged to actually also increase their general provisions uh, during the crisis. Um, so the next thing we do is we look at lending behavior. How have banks reacted to the pandemic, to the lockdown measures in terms of lending? And there are very um, uh, different results depending on whether you include the so-called PPP loans, paycheck Protect, protection program or not. These are the average numbers here. So the, the, the continuous line includes all the loans, including these uh, government supported, um, government subsidized um, loans to small businesses. I think it's up to 500 employees. And if they do not fire people or if they rehire people, they don't have to pay back the loans. So it's partly actually a grant. Um, it's even more contrasting for small business loans 
where you have an increase in overall lending if you take into account these PPP loans, but actually without the PPP loans, lending to small businesses actually went down. You can alternatively say banks replaced regular lending with PPP loans during the pandemic. And that also shows up when we actually look at the um, um, in, in the regression context. So first, this is overall loans and leases in the uh, in the US again across banks um, over time. Um, the, 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 the general trends actually um, uh, it was rather negative. Um, uh, but more so when we exclude PPP loans, um, there's some variation here in overall lending, which increased um, uh, for banks that were more exposed to these lockdown measures. That becomes again very striking is when we consider the um, small business loans. First, on the left, on the right hand side, banks, and there was a general trend to reduce regular lending, and even more so for banks that were more exposed to pandemic and to lockdown measures. But at the same time, there was an increase in overall lending, and this was driven primarily by banks and more exposed to the lockdown measures. Again, using these PPP loans rather than regular lending and therefore also uh, responding to a need by enterprises that had liquidity needs, additional liquidity needs uh, uh, during the lockdown measures and the economic uh, uh, consequences. Uh, this is actually also quite a big result. Um, so for example, if you look at, uh, um, the, uh, uh, look at the average bank, like the bank that was uh, exposed to the average, to the mean, to uh, the pandemic and to the lockdown measures, Overall, there was an increase of 30 percentage points in lending growth, including PPP, but there was a reduction by 10 percentage points if you exclude um, uh, PPP. So, of course, the question is, is it really, um, is this demand driven, is it supply driven? Um, why is it that banks um, uh, reduce general lending? Well, um, that's something we're going to express in the next uh, step. <clears throat> Let me first show you um, that if you look at household loans, this did, did not hold. There was actually a re general reduction in household lending. Um, for CNI loans, again, a general increase uh, in uh, in lending, but not varying across uh, uh, banks according to their exposure, geographic exposure to uh, to uh, um, the pandemic and to lockdown measures. Maybe as a final remark here, um, why do we find such a clear significance for geographic exposure to the pandemic and lockdown measure when it comes to small business lending, but not general lending. Well, I guess this is another kind of um, 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 piece of evidence that um, distance still matters, including during the pandemic. Um, I mean, there's also ev other evidence that smaller banks and um, more kind of local banks were much quicker to push out the PPP loans to their clients than uh, larger banks that might not necessarily lend to clients close by. So how do we address the, the demand versus supply? So here what we do is um, we use data from the Small Business Administration. So where the data have to be reported um, to the uh, Small Business Administration um, under the uh, um, goodness, I forgot, under, under uh, legal requirements. Um, um, so these are data where we know how much each bank has lent um, to small businesses in which area, in which county. And we can compare the lending under the PPP, the Paycheck Protection Program, with the small business lending, uh, which in this case we uh, average over 2018 and 19. Um, now, of course, this uh, SBA lending and PPP lending are not completely comparable because the requirements are somewhat different, but it seems to be a very close match in terms of the target group of uh, small business lending captured on the SBA and uh, the, uh, the, uh, the PPP lending um, um, that was uh, supported by the, the, the federal government uh, in uh, 2020. And what we have seen, so what we can compare here is um, to which extent is it local circumstances, so exposure to um, pandemic, exposure to lockdown measures, to which extent is it the exposure of banks on their national level to, ex uh, to uh, pandemic and to, uh, to uh, um, uh, lockdown measures that can explain increase or decrease in small business lending under the PPP compared to pre-pandemic regular small business lending. And what we can see is that actually, it seems that the, the um, 
pandemic itself doesn't come in significantly. Yes, um, in counties which were more affected by lockdowns, there was an increase in small business lending. Um, but also, and even if you, control, you can control for county fixed effects, um, the banks that were exposed more on the national level to the lockdown measures, they also lent more uh, to small businesses in given counties. So basically banks that were more affected, again, as I showed you earlier, in terms of financial health, by being exposed to lockdown measures, they were more likely to replace um, uh, uh, regular lending, regular small business lending with PPP lending, uh, kind of um, indirectly taking advantage of the subsidized lending uh, to kind of support their own uh, um, their own loan, loan portfolio, which maybe is an additional new insight that, that people haven't talked much about yet. So this is what's kind of the second part. Let me go to the third part. So I've kind of uh, looked first at the financial health. Um, then I looked at lending, but of course, when we look at this lending, especially small business lending, of course, there's a mix of kind of the regular market-based lending or bank lending, regular bank lending, sorry, and the uh, kind of government-supported lending. Now, if you turn to a segment of the um, um, of the uh, borrower population which did not directly benefit from government support, that would be the syndicated lending market. So very big loans um, syndicated across uh, um, um, uh, different uh, different banks. Um, though, of course, there might also be indirect support, but it's definitely not direct support as under the PPP. And so here, you might be more clearly picking up effects of the crisis and um, of the both the, um, the health crisis and the economic crisis uh, on this uh, on this lending segment. So the first thing we do here is we look at the, the number of loans given by banks. Again, um, um, a time of national variation and then also direct exposure. Unfortunately, here we have only um, data until uh, until the second quarter, um, because then the, um, the, the 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 database where we got the data from doesn't uh, have any uh, deal scan doesn't uh, include these data any longer. But we clearly see is that banks that were given their geographic distribution were more exposed to the pandemic, um, net and the the, um, the lockdown measures were give gave fewer loans and the lo average loan volume also reduced. And that's in addition to the kind of national trends. When we then look at loan conditionality, so comparing, looking at interest rates, looking at maturities, um, here is the kind of graphic illustration. Yes, banks that were more exposed geographically, um, in this case to the pandemic, they also increased their interest rate spread more and somewhat at least decreased also their maturity of the loans. And that's also confirmed in the uh, regression analysis, although um, more so for interest spreads than for uh, maturities. So we can clearly see here an increase in the uh, um, uh, in the interest spreads um, overall on the national trend, but also um, for banks that were more exposed to the pandemic and to lockdown measures. Again, if you do this for maturity, so here, yeah. Um, it's not as clear. Again, there's national trends to shorter maturities, but it's uh, if you look at the bank-specific exposure to uh, the pandemic and to the lockdown measures, uh, it's not uh, as clear-cut. So um, let me summarize. Um, so what we find in this uh, analysis for the U.S. is that banks geographically more exposed to the pandemic and lockdown measures show an increase in loan provisions in non-performing loans. And by the way, in case this question might come up, we don't find similar trends in terms of deposits or liquidity or other measures. So it's really about financial health and it's also about the lending side, where we find especially an increase in lending to small businesses for banks more exposed to the pandemic and lockdown measures. So this is driven by government guarantee loans. So government guaranteed loans basically replaced regular loans um, to small businesses for banks that were more exposed to the pandemic uh, and uh, uh, lockdown measures. And similarly, we find an increase in interest spreads and decrease in loan maturity, again, which is uh, in line with uh, kind of standard uh, predictions that you would have of uh, how banks react uh, during such a crisis uh, or during an economic crisis when collateral values uh, uh, drop and uh, agency problems between borrower and lender um, increase. And let me stop here. Thank you. Many thanks, Thorsten. Um, I believe that the, uh, 
the index that you were referring to is uh, just for the audience. It's the uh, Olivier Lejeune. Non pharmaceutical intervention index by Olivier Lejeune, right? Exactly, yeah. Olivier Lejeune. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, NPI stands for non pharmaceutical in in intervention. Exactly. I like to call it lockdown. It's much easier. <laughs> much easier, indeed. 